Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. Bright and early in the morning here. Got my Crouton Ramones House Math t-shirt on. I know you I know you want one. I know you want one. If not, it, at least go check out Crouton Ramones House of Math. Um, and the people that I'm looking for are the people that understand voluntarism, understand statism is not the way to work, uh, not the way to do things, Austrian economics, free thinkers, uh, people that understand math and science. Because I've worked with kids, you know, the, their parents were brain surgeons, literally brain surgeons, or, you know, highly successful men in uh, stocks and securities market, highly successful men uh, that they understand, the engineers, they understand the math, but they can't teach it to their kids because they get it, but they just can't break it down for their children and it, and it frustrates them. I know a lot of other parents that are, you know, homeschoolers and so forth, moms and so forth. They never got the math in the first place, so they think, oh, they can't teach their kids math and they're worried about homeschooling or, or just helping their kids with homework or in public school or whatever. Crouton Ramon's House of Math solves a lot of those problems for you. Um, go over there and check it out. And I'm going to talk about, uh, the end of this is going to be uh, long, but the first part of this is going to be very, very short. And here's the very, very short part. The bankers admit that they contrived this thing, right? And it's all, all over the place in plain view. This is just one. This is off Investment Watch. Banker admits we engineered the global financial crisis. If you listen to what these guys have to say, you'll hear it all over the place, that they did this on purpose. The race to the bottom is on purpose. This is no accident. Okay, that's it. I'm done, right? One minute, 33 seconds. The thing was on purpose. You got screwed on purpose. The banker bailouts on purpose. This whole thing, right? And then you watch my other videos where I talk about they try to make it sound like it's going to be the apocalypse and the end of the world if you don't give us money and don't bail us out. Nonsense. They engineered this. 100% engineered. 100% contrived. They are not innocent. They are not blameless. They did fraud. They, they committed fraud. They committed egregious acts that are against the law, not just immoral, as, you know, the, the Obama in chief has to say that, oh, these are, you know, they, they, they may, may not have done what was right, but it wasn't illegal. It was absolutely, robo-signing is illegal. Not having the note and trying to foreclose is illegal. Fraud is illegal. The, <laughs> packaging these things that you know are crap and calling it AAA, that's fraud and it's illegal. The, these guys knew what was going on. Nobody's getting prosecuted. Okay, and they're doing this on purpose. They want to enslave you with debt and taxes. This keeps you busy. This keeps you minding your own, watching your kids. You have no no time to get involved, no time to watch videos like this, no time to self-govern, no time to go out and protest, and no ability to not go out and protest. Because my thing is, don't, don't give them anything to do. Don't go out there and give a cop a reason to arrest you or, or shoot tear gas at you or put their uniform on. Stay home! Right? Stay the fuck home. Don't do anything. Disconnect all your stuff. Get, quit watching. Get, get out. Get, right? Quit paying your bills. Stay home. It strikes work. They absolutely get the attention. If, you, if, the, if this nation, the poor people that are getting squeezed right now, stayed home. Not the Occupy Wall Street action where you're out in the streets. Not the Tea Party action where you're out protesting and looking, you know, playing the fool with your tea bags and, and pointy hats. <laughs> a pointy hat, really? Because, anyway, the, the idea, you know, don't get on tea. Just don't show up to work, right? Let people know. Keep your internet, right? Maybe keep one phone line so you can communicate with each other. But turn off your cable. Quit paying your electricity. Quit paying. Don't buy any gas. Don't get in your car and go anywhere. Don't, right? And if you do, carpool and go to the farmer's markets. Quit supporting them. Quit paying your, 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 uh, if you know how legally that you know how to avoid taxes and you know how to, uh, that you don't owe the tax. That, not that you, I don't want to pay my taxes because I don't agree with the war. I don't pay, want to pay my taxes because I don't agree with the bailouts. Screw you. You got to pay your taxes. But if you understand the law and you understand that you're not subject to certain taxes, don't pay the tax. <gasps> the, you know, don't don't pay your credit cards anymore. Don't pay your mortgage anymore. Don't pay your... I mean, if you just quit, just stop supporting the guys that oppress you, things would change very quickly. That's never going to happen, right? With the 100 monkey theories. And that's another thing, you hundred, you guys that are so smart, you're stupid. You don't understand the collective unconscious. You don't understand the, the concept where, where Samuel Adams talked about, you know, that small few that's keen to set the brush fires on the mini. You don't understand that, like, when a Facebook page gets around a thousand likes, it starts to snowball out of control. You don't understand that when, the same thing with websites, when people start coming, word of mouth starts happening, more and more people start talking, and then you get consciousness change. There's a tipping point, even in the stock market, where everybody's buoyant, and then it ships over to fear. 
right? <laughs> and then, or then when everybody's too dismal, and then it tips over the other way. And then there, mathematically, we can show this that it gets to a point when a certain percentage, right? And like when in currencies start to hyperinflate, what percentage GDP is the debt and so forth? We, there's a right. It hits that tipping point. Right now, with this hundred monkey theory, and I'm not talking about monkeys washing apples in the right. The idea is the collective unconscious. More and more people spreading the word. And if you can't get that, get the fuck off Godlike Productions because you're not smart enough to be there. Um, and I thank all, thank you for all your support, you people over there, for coming over and liking my Facebook page and going to. I can see the results in my uh, my math websites. So I'm going to talk a little bit about math uh, right now. But basically, that's it. It was contrived that you learn about the Fed, learn about money, learn about sound money. Right now, as I speak, uh, and see, I made that video where I predicted what was going to happen. And oh, you, the trend is your friend. If you understand, this, right? I used to be able to make tons of money. I could be doing anything. I could be. I could just be fooling around collecting paper in the stock market and making good sums of money. I've done it before. I can do it again. And now, before, I only knew how to go long. Now I know how to go short. I'm going to go short and long. I've gotten smarter over the years. And when, when you, you understand that you can make just as much money as it going with it going down as it going up, you start to understand why the bankers whipsaw and this whole bullshit concept about the business cycle up and down and so forth. They make money going up. They make money going down. They make money going up. They make money going down. And, it's, and, and they play you guys for fools. They play you like drums. Um, and they, now they want your pension and this whole thing is contrived. They're going to want austerity. They're going to want cuts. They're going to want higher taxes. They're going to want all this stuff. And it's hundred percent contrived. They've done it on purpose. This is no accident. This is not conspiracy theory. This is just policy. This is not the evil of Satan. This is just guys making money. And now they've gotten out of control. They've gotten to the point where our government doesn't control them. We don't restrain them. Now they're going to try and make it so that you can't restrain them by taking out your guns and taking away your ability, right? Threatening the media and threat, right? Keep it, putting drones in the sky. Oh, you can't believe what's coming. You can't even conceive of what's coming because you can't conceive of that kind of greed and that kind of lust for power. But it is contrived. Ring a bell, bang a gong, go tell somebody this is on purpose. This is no accident. Understand that there's something that Ron Paul talked about that it's no coincidence that all this war and central banking coincided. It's no coincidence. Captain Obvious states the obvious. Ron Paul states the obvious. I'm stating the obvious. Look at history. Look at what's going on. Just look around what's going on. And, and you need to understand that the whole thing, this price of silver is contrived. They, they, right? If they, when you start to understand that they can rig the silver market, they can rig the gold market, they can rig the stock markets, they can rig the money markets, they can rig the bond market, they can rig, <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. But eventually, the market wins. This is what the, what you need to understand also. The thing about revision to mean, the thing, I mean mathematics is, is a bitch, because <laughs> the bottom line is certain principles, you can do, you can make it look like you're winning for so long, and then things fall apart. But right now, 2844, told you. I told you, if you understood that when it, when gold, when it was at third, when uh, gold was over sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred, and you could go short, or same thing with silver, being able to take and go short when it was at like say thirty four, thirty three, thirty four. This move, guys have become wealthy just on this one move. But they do it over and over again. It's contrived. It's on purpose. This is no accident. Nothing happens in politics and the markets without the big boys having their fingers in it, right? And they can make a trend happen. And then this whole thing where they, they even got the media to jump on about the death cross and gold and all the bubble. The bubbles and bonds, guys. Anyway. All right. So, like I said, I'm done. I've been, I've been done for a while. It's just the, the concept of spread the word. Understand the, that it, it doesn't take the majority. It takes the minority. And this is the concept of the 100 monkey theory. Okay, so I want to talk about math very quickly. You can stop. You can stop. Thanks for all your support. You blur with The video's over. Okay, now, the, uh, <laughs> the addendum. The, okay, talking about math. Okay, why the math? Because like, like, why I could be doing other stuff. I could. There's a lot of other things I could be doing making more money. But eventually, I'm going to be making a lot more money doing the mathematics. But the math is crucial because this is the underpinning of all of it. You can't understand economics and finance if you don't have understand math. You can't understand politics. You can't. There's no place where mathematics and the critical thinking skills and the reasoning that comes along with math doesn't help. 
and I've seen this over the years. I used to just be a salesman for mathematics, and then I became a student of the mathematics, uh, you know, well, a purveyor of the mathematics. Now I'm a student of the mathematics, and I realize that this is going to be, you know, I can do this till, the, till I'm dead, because there's so much math out there. I've just been focusing on how to teach little kids mathematics and so forth. But, you know, eventually I'll be teaching, you know, mid-school kids mathematics, because my kids will get to the point where they're in middle school, and then I'll be high school, and then college, and so forth. But already they're doing stuff that, you know, they're teaching in colleges, right? And they're six, seven, eight years old. How is this possible? All right, I'm going to tell you how it's possible. This is the, these are the secrets, or this is the, the, the ways to get to uh, understanding of mathematics. And anybody can do this. I've done, I've taught uh, kids, like I said, their parents are brain surgeons and wealthy men and, and guys that actually understand mathematics, engineers and so forth, but they can't explain it to their kids. So here we have a methodology for you to be able to take very powerful tools and teach your kids simple math concepts, which turns out to be a very powerful thing because we don't just teach them computation, we teach them mathematics. Okay, so the first thing you need is a skill set. Number one, write this down if you're writing it down. I'm going to do five points because, um, why? Because five fingers on the hand, so five. Concept number one is that skill sets, you need to be able to speak English. You know, or whatever language it is, Chinese, you got to have a command of your of your language. If you can't speak a language, if you cannot communicate in a language, then it's very difficult to teach them mathematics because mathematics is a language. And I'm talking about, you know, autistic kids or Down syndrome kids or other kids that may have speech difficulties and they can't make themselves understood and they can't use language, you're going to have a very hard time. But if your kid is quote unquote normal, can speak English, understands English, which is a ridiculous language, with more rules, or more exceptions than rules, mathematics, all rules, patterns, you can see them. You can develop your own rules once you see the patterns and you can use Socrates method. <laughs> if I woke up with 130 IQ, I would shoot myself. Uh, anyway, so you've got to be able to speak English. Um, and count to nine with a one-to-one -one correspondence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? 10, two hands worth. But, you know, a lot of kids will count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait a minute, there's only five things. They don't have one-to-one -one correspondence. you got to be able to get the 1, 2, 3. How many is 3? Three? 3, they know how many, right? Okay, once they get that one-to-one -one correspondence, oh, we're off and running. Okay, because then we can start adding and multiplying, subtracting, division, all the concepts that, that are there. Okay, so, uh, you be able to count to 9, have command of English, be able to identify a rectangle or a square, tell if something's same or different or not, we're off and running. Okay, so... That's the skill set, basic, basic. Okay, then, um, I wasn't sure where to put this last or next or where we're going to go, but you, you need to have the mindset. Little kids already have the mindset. Math is fun. Everything is, in, it is new, and they want to know, and they're curious, and they have questions, and they're creative, and they're creative thinkers, and they want to know about the world, and they want to know why 3 and 3 is 6, and how what the square root of 9 is. What does that mean? What does multiplication mean? Division? What does that word mean? Equals is equivalent to what the heck, right? All of this stuff needs explaining because it's all new and it's not hard. It's just stuff that they want to learn, like vocabulary and more. Like, right? Little kids want to learn more English. Like, my kids right now, they always find new words. They're watching PBS and so forth and, the, you know, the shows on there. And then they try to use the words that they learn. And sometimes it's quite hilarity ensues because they don't know how to use the words, but they try. And it doesn't matter, right? This, the same a attitude has to go with the mathematics. You just try. You just do it. You have fun. The only way to learn math is to do math. But anyway, okay, you got to change that mindset. Because if you believe you can, you can. And if you believe you can't, you can't. This is the, the, the wonderful thing about the world. You're always right. Okay, older kids, by the time they get to high school, they think math is hard. They think they can't do it. Well, they're right. doesn't matter how much math I can teach them. doesn't matter how easy it is. If they have that mindset, I've seen kids, like, okay, if it's chemistry, they can do the math. If it's uh, physics, they can do the math. But when it comes to math class, mathematics, they know math is hard and they can't do it, even though the math is identical, because that's the mindset. Okay, subconscious mind, very, very powerful thing. If you believe that it's hard and that you can't do it, you can't do it. And all I do is show them using their own hands and their own experience, the math is actually easy. That algebra stuff is easy. This division stuff is easy. That long division isn't as hard as you thought it was. Multiplication is actually simple. Adding two numbers or subtracting numbers and doing it in your head, pretty simple, actually, if you know how, if somebody teaches you how. Okay, change the mindset, everything changes. I've been all around this nation, all around this nation, and I talked to lots of people that could point to that F in mathematics where everything fell, everything crumbled. When they, when they start failing in math, all the grades suffer. Conversely, though, when they start getting A's in math, all the grades go up. I had this one kid, he's a pitcher, he likes to play, uh, actually not just any kind of pitcher, like a star athlete pitcher in, in uh, mathematics, 
or in mathematics, in baseball, and uh, his mathematics, he was coming to me because he was getting an F. Okay, if you get an F, you can't play here. He's in public school. You can't, you can't play. So star pitcher, benched, right? <laughs> okay, so I get him to the point where he's least getting C's. And the way I got him to C's, because he was down in the 40s and crazy grades, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, a 60 was a high grade. Okay, so now I get him to getting hundreds and A's, and now the average gets up to C, and he can play. And then his dad pulls me aside. He's like, what the hell did you do to my boy? He's talking about college. Because now he sees that if he's getting A's in mathematics and he can get A's and he's a great, but he can go to college in a scholarship, right? They don't give kids scholarships to get F's in math. And they just because you're great in baseball, nope, you got a great scholar athlete. Okay, you can change people's life. Okay, I mean, the way I got into this in the first place was I couldn't get people to pass the securities test. I, I had agents beneath me. They could spend all this time getting them, get develop their market and, the, and all the rigmarole that you got to go through to get a guy to get into it and then, you know, develop his contact list and everything. And then he can't make any money because he can't pay, pay you know, pass the securities test. So he can't get paid. So strike at the root. Mathematics. Understanding. Okay. But you, the, the, with that mindset, if you have the mindset that you can do it, you can do it. All right. So, and this is how I did it. I, with that kid, this the baseball player, I changed his mindset to thinking, I didn't do all of that. He did the work. All I did was show him that math is easy. And then all of a sudden, when he went to school, math was easy. And he could understand. And if he didn't understand, he came to me. We talked. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. So then, concept-based teaching. Five basic concepts. Mathematics is the study of numbers. All we do with numbers is count. But don't get confused that, that counting... And, and mathematics is the same thing. Computation is how we do mathematics, but computation is not mathematics, right? It's how we do the math, mathematical. What, uh, mathematics is, the mathematics is a language plus critical thinking. Thank you, Mr. Feynman. Um, so understanding five basic concepts. Math is the study of numbers. All we do with numbers is count. Highest number we count to is not, that's concept number one. Concept with five, see, you keep it on one hand, right? Keep it simple. All we do with numbers is count, right? And then, and and the, the, right, that's the, your concept number one. Concept number two, we only count as high as nine, and we only count stuff that's the same. Concept number three, we form rectangles to facilitate counting. Concept number four, zero zero. Concept number five, no fun. Get back to one, and even then, it's going to be relative. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so concept-based teaching, understanding numbers are made out of other numbers, understanding that we, we're just combining, understanding that what the equal sign is, and that w when the equal sign never lies and nothing's crossing the equal sign, that we're not balancing anything, this is equivalent to that. Even just that one thing, made this one kid in calculus, just, wow, they just opened up his mind. For, right? Another girl I know also, and when she was doing uh, trigonometry, that just that one simple concept that it's equivalent, this is equal to that. That they're the same. This is not the answer. These things are same. And understanding the, the, simple, the most basic concepts in mathematics, right? And then you use, see, and then understand the patterning and show them the patterns, and they can come up with the rules and formulas themselves instead of using memorization techniques and, and you know, all rules and process, being able to think critically, being able to think creatively, being able to use mathematics. This is why mathematics and philosophy used to be, you know, like this. But now it's, you know, two separate sides of the campus. All right, then you got to have the right tools, right? Okay, so... Skill set, mindset, concepts. Then you got to have the tools. Base 10 blocks, manipulatives. These are powerful, powerful tools, and most teachers, most parents use them for addition, maybe some subtraction, and some place value. They don't understand that you can use it for algebra and calculus. They don't understand that you can use them to do percentages and decimals and fractions and any of the math. You can make what I show is a uniform methodology for the teaching of mathematics. Not some of the math, not the kids' math. That's why you'll see in my blog every once in a while. You know, it'll be all about little kids, and then all of a sudden we're doing trick. Right? It'll be all about little kids, and you'll see some of my high school students, you know, doing algebra and, you know, pre-calculus or calculus or whatever. Because once you understand the basic concepts, it all opens up and it becomes easy. And again, when the mindset changes to, oh, I can, I can do this, this is basic. This is just more of, you know, finding the one. This is just more of no fun, get back to one. This is just, oh, hero zero. The basic, basic concepts. Then they, they can do the math. And they understand how those five basic concepts that I covered apply. All right. And then you got to practice. The only way to learn math is to do math. Simple as that. And once you practice and you see with your own eyes and use the methods that Socrates gave us so long ago. <laughs> see, so Socrates and Bastiat. No, it's sorry. So, so great. And Bastiat walking to a bar. Anyway, okay. So uh, where was I? Okay. So the mindset is the magic, though. 
right? Once they, once they do the math and they understand what's going on there, that's when it gets the, the magic happen. The, me taking them from F to A is actually just a shift in their thinking and boom, they can do the math. Okay. Uh, so go, go find my Facebook page, go take a look at some of the videos I've done, get, find out about this method, tell others, and I'm telling you, I'm, great things are coming your way when it comes to the mathematics because we're going to change a lot of things in just one or two generations with the homeschooling thing. Ron Paul's got a book about homeschooling coming out. I got a book about mathematics coming out here. It'll probably be two years even if we from get go from now. If everybody went, yay, this is the greatest thing ever, which they're not going to because everybody hates math. It will be a couple of years before this thing gets published. But anyway, the idea is that, you know, with the homeschool movement and people understanding liberty and understanding, you know, the Fed and understanding fully informed jury and understanding self-governments and voluntarism, that these are principles that are not taught in public schools but can be taught in homeschools, then there's going to be a huge change because more and more people are taking their kids out of public school and, and homeschooling themselves or doing much, becoming much more involved because the concept was supposed to be the teachers were there to assist your your education of children, not do it all for you. And what we did was we stepped away, gave it, and gee, we see how well that worked. We see how well the mathematics is going, right? How well is our mathematics going? And see, Bucky, Buckminster Fuller tells me, don't try to change the system from within. Don't try to go in there and create a new system within the system and make changes. Just create a whole new system and let the other one fall apart and let them come to you. And that's, that's the idea, is that because I got to go to parents, and teachers that want to, but I'm not going to go try and sell schools. I'm not going to go and try, right? Because, you know, who am I? I'm just some guy. <laughs> some guy that looks like this. All right. E pluribus unum. That's 21 minutes, but the first part of it was short, wasn't it? It was short, damn it. <laughs> that the thing, this whole thing is contrived. And the way we're going to go around this and see through their bullshit is with mathematics. All right. E pluribus unum. Thanks for your time. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate it all.